Hey, you guys, welcome back. Happy New Year 2023. It's a new year and I just love fresh starts. I love new planners. I'm so excited to be here. I have missed you guys. I have had a couple of weeks off content, so we're going to be kind of easing our way back into it. I had a fun, fun holiday with my family and then I ended up getting sick, but I'm feeling much better. But you might hear it a little bit in my voice as I'm still sort of recovering. But I did take some time over the holiday break to set up my Erin Condren Franken planner. And I thought since I'm going to ease back into some content, this would be the perfect thing to share here at the beginning of the year. We also will have a January notebook challenge coming up and I will have my new year reset routine coming up where I'll show you my new Kanban board setup and my new Notion set up for HB90. But for today, we're going to be looking at this beautiful Erin Condren planner that is set up as a six month planner. And it is an amalgamation of multiple different planners. So I'm going to show you the whole process and take you through it. I've also got a few giveaways. I wanted to do this before the start of the year, but didn't quite get to it. So I'll share that with you here. And those will be given away here on the channel um, today, this week. So I'm excited for everything. I also just wanted to take a minute to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for 60,000 subscribers. Like it's just such a dream come true. And I never dreamed when I first started this channel that it would have so many, like so much community, so many people following, and it just means the world. So I love you guys. I'm so excited for a new year. Thank you for being here still. And thank you for 60,000 subscribers. If you are new here, I would love for you to hit the like button and the subscribe button and come join us. We talk about a lot of writer stuff. We talk about a lot of planner stuff, productivity, things like that. So I'm so happy to be here for another year. So let's get into it, you guys. Um, let me go ahead and preface this by saying that I, in the past, have used multiple Erin Condren planners. And in the past, that really served me to have like one specific planner for social media so that when I pulled that out, I could focus only on social media. But over time, different things, different life periods might mean different needs for your planners. And so I have definitely hit a time when I need to simplify how many physical planners I'm using, but I still wanted the functionality of an editorial calendar, a time tracker, a social media planner. I just don't want to have to keep up with four different books in my house. And so I have combined them into one. And I'm telling you right now already, even just a week into the year or whatever, I am loving it. So always know that when I'm sharing anything about my own system or my planners, I'm never sharing it from a place of this is what I think you should do or you need to do, or if you're doing it differently, like that's never my intention or my vibe. I'm always coming at it from a idea of this is fun for me. I'm sharing what's working for me. And if you love it, great. If it gives you ideas, great. If you don't love it, great too. Like it's fine. I don't expect for you to want to pull apart your planners, but just know that this is just coming from a spirit of this is what's working for me right now. And I would love to hear what's working for you, even if it's something totally different. It's not a, I think you should do this kind of thing. So, um, in the spirit of just sharing with you what is working for me right now and what's bringing me joy, let's get into it. This is my new Erin Condren Franken planner. So let's start from scratch. Yay. Okay. So I actually do have some coils hanging around and I also first step was to gather the planners together that I knew I wanted to use. So I have this hourly layout color blends for 2023. I have this, um, harmony neutral that is in the vertical layout that was an 18 month planner that some of these months have already gone by and I never throw out old pages because I feel like they can always be repurposed and then I have this teacher lesson planner from the focus collection which is the seven by nine and I'll have all these planners linked for you down below and then they have different coil colors so you have silver or gold or rose gold and then I also grabbed some of the older pages that I've pulled out of notebooks or planners before and some little needle nose pliers. You might not want to use pliers like this if you don't want to damage your coils at all, but I don't really mind mine getting a little bit crunched up. I'm not always like a detailed person when it comes to that, so it doesn't bother me, but if it's going to bother you, you can place something on top of the pliers, like a little sock or a piece of something that will be soft so it won't get so crunched up. And then I just took all the covers and things out, out of the planner and I 
usually start with that bottom piece of coil. I just move the top piece of coil out of the way. And then the bottom one, I try to make it as round, just like the rest of the coil as possible so that it will go through those pages really easily. And so here I'm going to take apart the second one and you'll see that I'm just taking the pliers and I'm trying to straighten out that coil and make it more like the rest of the circle. And that makes it pretty easy to just go through. And then I keep the pages together. Sometimes you can clip them together or whatever but uh, it's pretty easy to do I feel like once you get the hang of it it's just that if you want to make sure that the coil doesn't get sort of crunched up or damaged you'll just want to take a little bit more care with it than I do here so most of these coils are the same size with the 12 month coil but this particular one that I'm using right now is an 18 month coil and it is slightly bigger and so once I get all my pages and I've decided what size I'm going to be creating the new planner to be I will decide which coil to use so then I just take all the pages that I have and I start going through each planner individually and pulling out the pages that I think I might want to use in my new planner now before I started taking them apart I already did some of the thinking work of what do I want this planner to be? How do I want it to function? What types of pages do I want to use? So I've done some of that thinking ahead of time. And now I'm just going through each individual planner and pulling out any little extra notes pages or checklist pages or any of the monthly spreads or just anything, stickers, anything I think I might want to use and setting them to the side. So this is that color blends hourly. And because it's so bright and colorful, I knew I wanted to use this as the majority of the new planner. But like, I just moved out those birthday stickers because I'm not going to use those in my business planner. So I just take out any pages I know I don't want to use and which coil do I want to use, which pages do I want to add to. And once I think that I have all of the pages I know I want to use in the new planner, that's when I start putting them together in the way I want my new planner to be organized. At first, I thought that I was just going to do a three month planner, just a quarterly for January, February, March. But then as I started actually going through it, I decided that I was going to make it a six month planner. So sometimes this part of it is really just a process of going through and thinking, how do I want this to function? Where do I need extra pages? What do I actually want to put into this planner? And just putting some thought into it because you don't want to put it together and then put the coil back on and then have to take it apart because it wasn't ideal. So this is where you really want to spend the time to figure out how do I want to use this and then once I get all these pages put together the way I want them I actually will flip through it a few times before I put it back on the coil I didn't put that on camera but that's the way I'll do it and then you can see here I'm deciding that it's not going to fit on a 12 month coil and so I decide to use that 18 month coil and it's going to have a you know six month planner that black clip that I just had. That is something that you'll see people clip the pages together, but I have actually found when I am starting the process of recoiling the planner together that it's better if it's looser. And so I don't clip the pages. I let them kind of flop. You just want to make sure that as you're doing it, that you are getting all the pages in there. So that's kind of the main concern. But I always like to start my coil at the top of the planner and work my way down because that way the sort of more damaged part of the coil that I've used that needle nose pliers on is the part that's at the bottom of the planner rather than at the top where I feel like it would be a little bit more noticeable and again if it's really going to bother you to have your coil slightly damaged or different from when you first bought it you might want to use a different process here than what I use because mine does get a little bit crunched up down there and then you just work your way through the entire planner and then that top piece of coil I didn't really have to use the pliers on I'm just using my fingers and I just sort of tuck it back inside then the bottom piece of coil that's the one that I actually need to make sure that it's you know in a good position so it doesn't mess with the pages and so you'll see me adjust it a few times I'm also going to put the covers back on and a lot of you have asked me to kind of show a little bit more how I do this cover so I'll slow it down for you in a minute but I like to turn the planner side sideways and then sort of push the planner cover while I'm rolling the coil and it just sort of works. So I'll slow it down here for you when I'm putting this back part on and it really is pretty easy. So I line up 
the coil and then I just sort of push it down while I roll the, the coil backwards. And that has been the easiest way I have found to put these covers back on. And it's, it's pretty easy. It works great. And then that's it. My brand new planner. Okay, so that is how I set it all up. That's how I actually got it together. And it seems maybe intimidating to have to pull out pliers or to pull these apart. But honestly, once you've done it a couple of times, unless you're like super particular about this looking perfect, which you might want to take a little bit more time than I did because I don't really worry about that, it really doesn't take that long to do it. So I hope that this gives you some ideas of how you could maybe repurpose old pages that you could redate. If you have older Erin Condren planners that are just going to go to waste, this is such a great way to be able to Franken plan and use those pages in conjunction with your newer pages. Um, but any ideas that you get from this, I think would be great. I also do promise you that I have a giveaway. So let's go over those real quick. I wanted so badly to be able to give these away before the start of the new year, but better late than never. I will have this giveaway open until Monday so that I can go ahead and send these out next week. Priority mail, hopefully, and we'll get these sent out to you as soon as possible. So one is a Hobonichi Weeks Mega. This is the kind of gr uh, bluish green teal colored one. I can't remember what it was called, but it has, um, you know, Hobonichi Weeks. Then I also just have one half of the year from January to June, 2023 of the daily duo. So this has a monthly spread. It has uh, daily pages in it. And this is just from January to June. It's the half year one. And then I also have an eight and a half by 11 Harmony Neutral. This is so beautiful and I'm so sad to not be using it. This is the large size and y'all, this is such a great project planner. If you have a specific project you're working on or if you want to use it for an editorial calendar, this is what I have used for my YouTube editorial calendar for years and I know someone is going to love it. So I'll be giving all three of those away and all you have to do is like, subscribe and comment down below to enter to win. Let me just go ahead though and say that since I started doing giveaways last month, I have had a huge group of spam bots that have come on and have been replying to comments saying things like, message me on Telegram, you've been shortlisted as a winner. And I have been trying to block them, um, spam them, report them, all of that, but they keep popping up. So if you ever see on my channel, and this happens on a lot of other channels as well, someone says, message me on Telegram, even if it has my profile picture and it says like heart breathings 8762 or something, it's not me. And I would never ask you to message me on another app or send a PayPal payment or anything like that. So only way that I will message you is I will leave a comment and say, email me at heartbreathings.com. And that way, you know, you're reaching me. So don't get caught on scams. Take care of yourself. I'm so sorry that that happened, uh, but it was out of my control and we're doing the best we can. But in case it happens again today, just report those comments. Don't reply to them. All right. So now let's go through this lovely planner. And of course, if you're not familiar with Erin Condren planners, you can take these covers off. So that's one thing I do love about it is I can switch out the look and feel of this. But just to give you a little bit of an overview. I have these little charms. I think they still sell these, but I'm not 100% certain. One has an S and one has a little Druzy charm. I'm using the 18 month coil, like I said, and I have added some tabs, some bookmarks and some other tabs over here so that I have easy reference to get to the sections that I want to get to because I'm using this for multiple different purposes. The two main purposes for this planner are going to be a time tracker, or a done planner, as my friend Ronnie Lauren calls it, or also in the back side, it's going to be a social media sort of brainstorming pre planner. And so I'm going to show you how I'm using it. And like I mentioned in the flip through, this is a six month planner and I have two kind of two main sections to the planner and it is definitely chunky and I'm planning to use a lot of stickers. So I'm expecting this is going to grow. So I've got the color blends life planner 
here in the front. So this is the hourly layout. And I just think this is so beautiful and colorful and it makes me happy every time I open it. So I was excited to use that. You've got the yearly overview. And then I have this page, pretty much every Erin Condren planner has a page that has 12 boxes in it that you could use for the year. So I use some cute little stickers from Boulder Bond. I will link these down below to put here quarterly, January, February, March, April, May, June, and so on. And I'm planning to use this basically as a way to come back and put in how much time I ended up using in my task blocks, as well as how much my social media grew. So this will be kind of like an overview of that data. And this is only a six month planner. So I don't know if when I move to my next planner, I'll pull this page out to be able to use this second half of the year, or if I'll just use a different one and we'll see how it goes. The next section has this little gold bow tab. This comes from the planner society. And this is just some basic dot grid pages and I'm using them for time tracking. So I just kind of put this in as an example because I haven't fully filled this out, but I've been doing this in my A5 binder for the past several quarters and I really enjoy it. And this is a page that comes from my HB90 planner. And in that system of HB90, we basically plan out our projects based on an estimate of how much time we have available versus how long each task will take. So for example, you'll fill out your ideal weekly schedule and you'll say how many half hour task block chunks do I have in a typical day? And there's a whole process around it, so I won't go too deep into it, but you can find it in the planner or if you end up taking the course. And then you would say, let's say I have 800 task blocks available for Q1. Then I would go through and I would say the disappearance of Vanessa Shaw is going to take me 180 of those task blocks. So then I would come here and I would, these are 10 task blocks a piece, and I would put in the estimate of how long I think it's going to take. And then I would, if it was 180, I would take this little purple highlighter and I would highlight 18 rows, which would be 180 task blocks. And as I go through the quarter every day, when I work on my books, I would come in and I would say, okay, I spent three task blocks today. So one, two, three, and then I spent two the next day, four and five, one the next day, six. And I would just track my time in here according to that specific project. And then at the end of the quarter, I could see, did I use all 180 task blocks? Did I finish my project? and I would be able to put in the actual time blocks used. And I would do that for every single major project in my list. So this would be a big project, but maybe I would have a smaller project like update my website and say that it's gonna estimate, it's gonna take me six task blocks. And then I would take this and I would just highlight the bottom of six task blocks. And then as I worked on that project, I would mark my time and then I could see, did it did I overestimate how much time it would take? Did I underestimate how much time it would take? Did I finish it? And it gives me a lot of great data. And this is not like you have to do this to do HB90, but this is just something that I like to do to be able to you know, make my plans better and my estimates better. And so I wanted a place to track it. Now I am trying to develop a habit of using my Timular, which is my time tracking like flippy device. So once I'm in a better habit of using that, I might not need this as much anymore, but we'll see. It's going to be a habit that I'm trying to cultivate, but is not a habit just yet. So I have four of these sheets and sadly, when I put them in, I just glued them in and it got some glue on the page. So I might pull this one out and redo that page. I have a few more of those dot grid pages in case I need them. Then I have two sections in my planner marked by these bow tabs that have these vertical pages. Now the vertical pages, as you saw, are pages that were out of date. And all you really have to do if your pages are out of date is just use stickers or washi tape or some kind, <laughs> some kind of um, correction tape to cover them and then you can just redate it. And that way you don't have to buy a whole new planner. You don't have to be sad that it went to waste and you can always reuse those pages pretty simply. So this is a sticker kit that I got years ago and have been saving up. And I just decided to use it here to cover up those um, dates. Now this vertical pages, I'm going to use as project planner pages, and this will be something I've never done before. So I'll share with you how it ends up looking once it's done. But let's say, for example, I was going to do a video series here on YouTube about how to write multiple POV. So what I could do is use this page as 
you know, writing multiple POV, video one, video two, video three, workbook here, et cetera. And I could plan out that whole project. And I like to do kind of one big themed project every quarter for Heart Breathings or for Sarah Cannon. So I have a section here that allows me for two of those big projects. And really I could put one on one page and one on the other page, just depending. So let's say for the month of April, I know that's not in Q1, but I might want to be planning for it in March. I might do something for Camp NaNoWriMo. So I might use this to plan out what those videos and reels and social media content are going to look like. So I have that here. And then I have another section in Q2 to be able to put those in as well. So I'll share that with you in my notebook challenges kind of as I get that done. Then you have the monthly spreads and I have two sets of monthly spreads in this planner. So the first set of them are from the hourly color blends planner and it goes all the way out through June. And I have already taken the time to decorate these months with stickers, mostly from Coffee Monsters Co. And it is already bringing me so much joy to have this monthly planner that I can really decorate and use and have all the things in one planner. Um, the second set of monthly pages I'm using differently, and I'll share that with you in a minute, but this will serve as my like main monthly calendar. I don't have one in my A5 planner. I do have one in Notion that I'll share with you guys on my reset video, but this is my main monthly planner where I can get an overview of every single thing that's happening in the month. And it gives me a chance to use sticker kits that I've saved. This is a, um, um, planner Kate sticker kit. And it just brings me joy to be able to put it all in one place. And in the past, when I was using so many different planners, it was kind of um, hard to know which one to put stuff in because I had five different monthly spreads. So this is, I'm enjoying having this kind of one home base for it. I might end up putting another like bookmark in here so that I can always get to the monthly spread, or I might put uh, something more like this bookmark in here, just so I have something that marks it and makes it easy to get to since I have all these tabs and things in here. But I'm planning to put all of my videos, my coffee chats, my meetings, launch stuff, birthdays, trips, tax deadlines, all of that stuff, hair appointment, everything is going into this one. And I've never done that before that I've had one monthly calendar that had my personal and business stuff. And I'm kind of looking forward to having that dashboard. So that's the first part. Then you guys, if you've been around, you know that I struggle to use this page. So if you have ideas on how to use this, or you have an Instagram where you share how you use this or a, a YouTube channel, I would love to see that in the comments. I just don't know how I'm going to use this. But then we get into what I call my time tracker or my done planner. So this is not pre-planning. This is planning after the fact. I do have a bookmark here that I will move from week to week and I'm planning to use Planner Kate stickers in this section. So Planner Kate always has with her big sticker kits for the Erin Condren vertical, she has a sampler page and the sampler page always has one full box, a bunch of like quarter and half boxes and some washi tape. And these are perfect for these hourly layouts. And I did add my own washi tape and I just put, it doesn't have like date dots or date covers in the smaller kit, but I love to put the little full box here, the washi tape here, and then use the boxes. But the way that I use this planner is basically as I go through my day, I will mark down how I used my time so that I have one planner that has how I plan to use my time and this one that shows what I actually did with my time. And it allows me to kind of look at my time in task blocks because this is already sectioned out by half hour sections, which is how I do my task blocks. So I'm marking when I woke up, I'm marking what I did for the day. So yesterday I, I was writing from 10 to noon. And then I signed books from 12.30 to 3.30 and then we went on a family walk. So I'll be able to come back to this and see. And I just keep this open on my desk just like this so that I can go through it and I'll use these stickers, the rest of these stickers throughout the week. And it brings me joy and it allows me to see where my time actually went, which is another sort of accountability tool, if you will. And I find this to be super helpful to do on paper. Like I said, once I use get used to using that Timular device more, I may not need this as much, but for now, this is the habit I have. And I will just use that every single week with these different stickers. And I think it'll be super fun and 
I'm enjoying it so far. So halfway through after March, you can see I do have another gold bow tab that will have my Q2 time tracking, which I'll paste in those same pages. Then I have another bow tab that will have these sticker or these pages that I'm going to put stickers on for projects and planning. So it's kind of separate into Q1 and Q2. And then we go straight back into the monthly and the hourly pages from the color blends planner. At the end of the quarter, I have basically more of these dot grid pages with a bow and I haven't put anything on these pages yet because I don't know whether I'm going to use this as an overview of how my time tracking went, like a collation of all that data, or if I want to use it for a different purpose. So it's just kind of sitting here for now, but I do have some notes pages here as well. So I have some notes pages here in the back and I'm planning to use this for video ideas, any kind of other editorial stuff. I'm trying to move most of my editorial calendar into Notion digitally, but I have been in the habit for so many years of doing all my brainstorming for videos, content for this channel on paper. And so I wanted to give myself some space to be able to still do that. Like what videos do I want to cover for the months and different things like that. So that's what this is for. Then I have a notes tab here and I have another few little notes pages here that are going to be for social media brainstorming. And then I have a bow tab here that brings me to a checklist. And the, most of the rest of this planner is either notes pages, which is in the back, or it's the first half of the teacher planner from J January to June. And this is the focused teacher planner that comes in the seven by nine and it came with checklist pages. And so I only used one checklist spread for this one for Q1, one for Q2. And down the side here, I have my Sarah Cannon brand and all of my like Facebook page, Facebook group, Instagram, Instagram stories, YouTube community tab, discord and newsletter. And then I have those same things for my heart breathings brand, except I have more Facebook groups for heart breathings. And then across the top, I have checklists weeks one through 13. Every quarter has 13 weeks and then Q2 weeks one through 13. And basically I just want to take a black marker or whatever and mark out whether or not I was able to post on that this week. So I've already posted to my Sarah Cannon Instagram so I can say yes to that. I've already posted to my Heart Breathing's Instagram. I've posted to my Heart Breathing Stories. I will be posting to YouTube tomorrow. So that's going to be on there. I have already posted to my Discord. So for example, I can go through the week and track this as a habit and it becomes another accountability tool to be able to say, did I post, did I stay consistent with my posting on each of these different platforms? And I think that'll be a good way to keep accountable. Then we move into the, what I'm calling basically my social media planner. And this is that teacher planner from the focus planner. So you've got a January overview page and then dates to remember. And I think this will be more useful than that other spread. Although I might take some ideas from that for here. But this is just going to be a brainstorm of what I want to do on my social media throughout this month. And I have two different brands, Sarah Cannon and Heart Breathing. So I might put one on this page and one on this page. And then the dates to remember are going to be things like we have Double Down Day coming up this weekend. So if you want to come write with us and we have writing sprints in the Heart Breathing's writing community all day, Saturday, and pretty much every day of the week, I will link our Google calendar for you down below. So I would put that on here. We have a virtual writing retreat coming up in the middle of January. So I'd put those dates on here, but anything from my editorial calendar or from just the world or my birthdays coming up that I want to cover on social media, I would put in these dates so that I can keep referencing that. Then I have the monthly spread and I don't want it to be just a duplicate of the same things that are going into these colorful monthly spreads. This one is going to be for pre-planning only. And so basically how I envision using this is mostly with pencil, probably I'm not going to usually use stickers, except I had this cute one to put on my birthday there. And I'm basically hoping to sit down at the beginning of every month and take a pencil and just brainstorm. Okay. I want to have a video here. I want to have, um, you know, I want to post 
uh, Instagram story here about this. I want to put reels here and just that pre-planning stage of what I want to do on my social media. If I want to do witchy Wednesday posts every week, go ahead and pre-plan what photos I might want to take or what topics I might want to cover. Because one of the things that I realized in my yearly review from 2022 is that really my social media is so sporadic. I do pre-plan my YouTube content can't always stay on schedule perfectly, but I do pre-plan it. But when it comes to like my Instagram reels, my Facebook posts, none of that stuff is really pre-planned. And so I don't stay as consistent as I want to. And I want to see what happens to my social media growth if I'm more consistent by planning it ahead of time. And I want to see if I can maybe get someone new on my team to help me with this, which would involve me making some of those decisions ahead of time as well. So that's what I hope to use this spread for. It's pre-planning for social media. And then on the actual pages, it has this really interesting kind of layout here, which is basically similar to a lot of teacher planners. And it's also very similar to the me layout and plum paper planner. You've got the dates on the side and it's only Monday through Friday since it is meant for school. And then you've got six different columns that are lined boxes. And then you've got a stats and notes section. How I use this might evolve over time, but I do have a little bookmark here to mark the spot. And then I have my Sarah Cannon brand on the left and my Heart Breathings brand on the right. Facebook, Instagram, Discord, and YouTube. Facebook, Instagram, Discord, and YouTube. And then I've got the dates here. If I'm going to post on a weekend, maybe I'll just put it on the side here, or maybe I'll change this layout slightly, or maybe I'll change the date here. Like if I know I'm going to post on Friday and Sunday, I could just change these dates on the side here and it should be fine. But basically this week, I'm not yet in the habit of using this. So it's not as filled out as it hopefully will become. And if you are just getting started with some new systems, I encourage you as well to like allow yourself time to cultivate the new habits. A lot of time when we hit the new year, we think, oh, all these routines are supposed to already be, I'm going to implement 12 new habits and be a whole new person, but it's not realistic. And that's why so often a couple weeks into the new year, we already are behind and frustrated. So I'm giving myself the time that I need to cultivate this as a habit because I need to make sure I have a pre-planning session every Sunday or whatever it's going to be. And so I'm still working some of those details out. So it's not as pre-planned as it is, but my goal is to get to a point where, you know, a few weeks before the end of January, I fill out everything I want to post on social media for the most part for February. And then I go ahead in the weeks and mark out like there's going to be a reel here or a Facebook post here or witchy Wednesday post here or whatever, and have it already pre-planned. But all I've done so far this week is um, I took a picture of my new keyboard and posted on Instagram and I posted a carousel of photos on Instagram with my word of the year, which is faith, by the way. And I'll probably make some more posts and, and do that. But eventually I want this to be a pre-planning tool that I can use to like have it all figured out ahead of time. And that is basically the rest of the planner. We have another bow tab here that marks the beginning of the notes section. And you can see I am utilizing some pages that my daughter Evie like a year ago wrote on with crayon and it's fine. Just reuse those pages. Um, but this will be all of my Sarah Cannon editorial and promo calendar ideas. So I have uh, projects that I'm working on um, to redo some of my website, some of my book um, back matter and things like that. So all of those notes will go in here. And so this is kind of more similar to my old editorial calendar. I did put some stickers in here and then there's a folder where I have some frequently used stickers like my YouTube stickers. And then I also have the like extra sheets from all those monthly kits that I can continue to use. And then I will also like slip whatever the weekly kit is for that planner sampler into the back. And that is how I am using this planner and it might evolve um, in the second half of the year, but so far I'm really feeling like this is going to serve me pretty well. The only other Erin Condren planner that I will be using in 2023 is 
a vertical planner that's a Hello Kitty planner. I talked about it in my 2023 planner lineup and that will be a memory keeping planner. So this is my only like business Erin Condren planner. So I'm using this one. I'm using my A5 planner that has my HB90 weekly in it and I'm using Notion. And those are basically the three planners that I'm using this year. And I'm pretty excited about it. I'm pretty nervous about making some changes, but I'm hoping that it's really going to be a good, uh, a good year for me. And I hope you are already off to a good start to your year as well. And I'm excited to continue to get to know you, to learn more about your systems. If you have any Franken planner questions, go ahead and put those in the comments. If you have any ways that you're doing things that you feel like are unique, um, or you have planner content on your YouTube channel, let us know down in the comments. Don't forget to enter to win these three giveaways. I will send them internationally and, um, wherever you are, as long as I can send them, I'm happy to send them out to you. And and I'm wishing you all the best. Happy New Year to all of you. I am excited for our January notebook challenge. I'm going to be redoing my notebook closet. So I'm excited to share that with you and um, more good content coming up. We will be running Publish and Thrive this year. Hopefully um, our registration will open in January. So be on the lookout for news for that. We also have our double down day coming up this weekend if you want to come right with us and I will leave all those links for you down below. All right. Missed you guys. Love you. So grateful for you. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.